So after making my ring of power, I wanted to try a more professional way of doing it. So I got a stick of actual jeweler's ring wax. We're gonna make a ring unlike any other. Now this type of wax is very firm and is designed for carving and filing in sharp and defined details into your ring. I'm gonna do my best to mark it and cut it as evenly as I can. So it looks like we're at 10.4 on one side and 10.3 on the other. Pretty close. Top to bottom's a little different though. We're at 9.2 on the bottom and 10.6 on top. We're gonna say it was designed that way. Now I need to make the inner diameter wider so it'll fit my finger. So I'm gonna draw some lines evenly around the center and then carve the middle away until I get a good fit. It fits. You must pick up a charge when you file it because when I push the blank through the particles, some of them are repelled like a magnet. It's really cool. So now that the inner diameter is set, I need to tackle the outside diameter. So I'm going to mark the thickness that I want the ring all the way around and then start filing it down. So the ring is taking shape pretty well. It fits onto my finger nice. Now this top part here, that would be where the jeweler carves the holdings for the stones. I'm not gonna do that, because I don't know how to set stones. I don't know how to make a ring either, but I'm gonna do something very different with this ring. I'm gonna use this. Now this is a mold of an Impala that I made a while back. Who remembers that video? By filling it with wax, I get a wax copy that I can then use for casting. But for this piece, I'm not going to need the whole thing. I'm just going to need the head. I'll remove the flashing and clean up the parting lines just like I would any other sculpture. And then the head will be ready for the next step. So now, instead of a diamond, I'm gonna put this Impala head on top of the ring. My wife said it's a bad idea, nobody wants it. But Splinter says it's a good idea. Splinter approves. Yep. So I need to determine where center is, and then I'll make a little pedestal that the head will fit down onto. Now I need to weld the head to the ring, so I used a soldering iron with the heat dialed way down. Then I'll use some files to blend it all together so you can't see the welds. That would hurt. Hit somebody with it. Ah, hide that in your boxing glove. Pop, 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 pop. All right, next step is to sprue it up and get it invested. I'll add the sprue to the base of the neck because that'll be the easiest place to modify and carve the metal away anyway.
so I have it sprued up, but I need to be careful. Since the head is the largest area of mass, that's going to be the last part to solidify. Heat rises, so if the largest area of mass is the last part to cool, that's also where the most shrinkage is going to happen. Which leads me to believe that if I do it this way, I'm going to have some shrinkage on the inside of the ring. That's going to misshape in it. It's going to be really hard to repair. So I'm going to try to adjust this so the top of the ring is at the base of the neck. So oriented maybe a little bit more like this. That should mean the most shrinkage is right on the part that I'm going to cut off anyway. So I simply cut the head off and readjust the angle. And once that's finished, I'm going to add one more sprue just for venting. So still a little worried about the shrinkage, I decided to add one more piece. Alright, so I shifted the angle and then I added this big glob of wax here. So that'll act as a reservoir. It's a much larger mass than the ring itself, so that should be the last area to cool. That means as the head cools, it'll be able to draw liquid metal from that. And hopefully we won't just deal with shrinkage, we'll eliminate it altogether. As usual, I'll be using UltraVest investment powder. The vacuum chamber helps eliminate any bubbles that get trapped. I'll melt out the wax plug because I like to minimize how much wax I actually burn out in the kiln. Then I'll ramp the temperature up so all the wax and residue is completely burned away. This ring will be cast in bronze. Maybe someday I'll work my way up to silver. I'll use a wire brush on a Dremel to knock off some of that investment dust. Now a jeweler will use a jeweler saw to carefully cut the sprues off the ring. I'm using an angle grinder and here's why jewelers don't use that. It's very easy to lose control and ruin your project. I'll be able to save this but that was a close one. I'll use a file to blend away that scar and nobody will be able to notice. For the rest of the ring, I'll use files to blend away the sprue marks and make sure everything is nice and even. Sandblasting is a good way to highlight surface defects and then I'll tackle the major ones with my carbide burrs. Once it's cleaned up, I'll take some finer stones and start working on polishing the ring. So I put a shine on it, but I think it needs some color. 
To preserve the color, I coated the horns with Protecticlear as well as the ring body itself. For color, I mixed up a bath of liver of sulfur and I soaked the ring in that. I'll add just a little bit of buffing and one more coat of Protecticlear and we're done. So what do you think? Would you wear a ring like that? It sits a little high on the finger and I should have had it a little closer to the knuckle because it's very top heavy. It kind of wants to flip around. It also serves as a self-defense weapon. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.